Hello, my name is Arthur. In the last video, we had looked at importing the tank, the new tank, with um, wheel and turret animation. So we have the recoil animation and the turning wheel animation. And in this video, we're going to look at a new way to make a tread. So this is the tread. I've already made it. Um, we'll take this off of the tank and we'll rebuild it. So this video is likely to take a little while and it may run into complications because this is experimental. This is the first time I've done this and gotten it working. Um, I've deleted the tank tread mesh from that from the tank and created this different kind of tread now i'm not ready to attempt to do what i think that this type of tread can do but what i believe this tread can do is um properly set up this type of tread would be able to allow wheels to have suspension so like vehicle wheels and introduce mesh deformation when the wheels are compressed. This is the method that I believe is used to create that. So this tread is actually an illusion where the wheels are actually spinning meshes. Um, the tank tread is entirely an optical illusion. So we're going to look at how to create that optical illusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down and not save it. I'm going to close down the tread and not save it. We'll go back to the scene without the tread. That still has the tank tread um, attached to it. We'll delete that later on when we get back to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the tank tread in Blender. So this is my blend file just previous to converting animations into NLA strips. So in the nonlinear animation window, there's no strips pushed down for the animations. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all of the animations because we don't need them. So I'll delete the keyframes, everything is selected, and I'm going to save the file as a branch. So I'm going to save it as a branch. I've already done this, so I've call, I'm calling the branch Abrams Curve. And we'll look at how to make the tread animation now. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off most of mo the visibility on most of the body. Um, so we'll need to expand the turret and the two guns to be able to reach everything. So we'll turn off the visibility on just about everything. Um, we'll look at which wheels we do and don't need. We need that wheel. We don't need that wheel. We don't need that wheel. But we need these four wheels. So we'll leave the visibility on those and we'll just turn off the turret, the gun and everything else just to get it out of the way so it's not going to be optically confusing. So now we just have the link and the wheels. So we'll deselect. We're going to get all of the wheels and take them into object mode or edit mode. So we'll select those, go into edit mode, look at them from a top view. go into vertices we're going to get just the rim of those so that's in x-ray mode we've selected the whole rim we'll shift d to duplicate that um it might be an advantage to pull them out so that we can see better and we're going to p separate that selection so those things are all separated. We'll tab into object mode. We'll take all of these pieces. 
So we'll select them, holding down Shift, Control J to join them. So now they're one object. And we're going to take, we're going to clear the parentage of that object. And that's going to move it on our tree here to the outside. And we can now hide all of the other wheels because we don't need them. We have what we need from those wheels. So from here, what we want to do is we're going to shift S cursor to world origin. We'll ensure the cursor is on the world origin. We're going to go object set origin to 3D cursor. Now the origin for these is set on the 3D cursor. We'll tab into edit mode, select all. And to open up this menu. And on Y, we're going to put those on to zero. So now they're centered on their origin. We'll look at those from a front view. And I'm just going to send that menu away. We'll deselect everything. Now we want to brush select at least two vertices on the inside of each of these circles. So we just want vertices on the inside of that rim. And it has to be at least two. At least one edge needs to be selected. So we'll go select. Select edge loops. That's going to select the whole inside. X, delete vertices. Now we have enough to be able to build a curve. So we're going to build a curve out of, out of our wheels. And that's going to give us a really exacting curve. So we can select the top of these two. Put in a face. And while it's selected, we might as well subdivide it to give ourselves a vertices to work with here. We'll select the bottom of these two, put in a face and subdivide that, just to give us a vertices. Now we need to find the outermost edge for these two sides. And I'm not even sure that that will play out to be even because, um, well, one thing I did was I left the wheels where they were when, um, when the animation was running. But that's okay. It's not going to matter that much. So what we want to do is we want to find the outside edge. So we just experiment. That one's wrong. But I can guess it's this one and this one from that measurement. So we're going to undo that. We'll try this one and this one and see what we get. Okay, that looks, that looks like the outside right there. So that looks good. We can settle for that. That will work. So we want to do the same thing on this side. Find an outside edge. So we want the utmost outside because we don't want it to have an appearance of coming inwards. So let's try those two. That doesn't work. But it looks like probably this one. So we'll control Z. And I'm paying attention to which vertices were selected and which ones I'm going to. So that looks good. But I'm thinking that it's probably actually this one and that one. So we'll try that one and see how that looks. We'll get in really close here. Let's go into edges and we'll delete the inside one. So the one that's inside, we're just going to X delete edges. So I figure that's our curve right there. Now what we need to do is delete the unneeded parts. So we'll get rid of the unneeded parts. And in some places this will require looking close and in some places not so much. This one, I'm going to want to see nice and close so I know which one is which. That's those two. So we can just delete those right now. 
and that will leave us what we need. Then we'll want to look closely here again. So these ones are pretty obvious. And then we go down to there, so we can get rid of that. And these ones are pretty easy to see. So X, delete vertices. And there we go. Now we have a curve. Um, this part, this can be a little tricky because I can't be assured how my normals turned out here. So what I'll try is I'm going to try to recalculate outside. And hopefully the normals will all be correct. So that's ready. Object, convert to curve. Let's come up here and let's call that our curve. So we'll change the name of that to curve. So the next thing to look at is our link. Now, all of my experiments with this is um, that I would end up having to rotate this link. But first off, what we're going to do is is completely centered. It's centered on the world origin and it's centered on the origin of the curve. So we're going to take it into edit mode. We're just going to pull it down. That leaves the origin where it is because we're in edit mode. And we're going to put it somewhere on the wheel. I think a little bit of overhang on the outside will look the best. Now we'll shift D, duplicate that. N to call up our dialog here, and Y, we're going to just remove the negative. And that's going to move our duplicate to the exact same place on the other side. So now we have a tread on each side. We'll tab into object mode. Let's look at that from a side view. We can hide the wheel again because it's just going to be visually distracting now. And let's bring this menu up. So now we want our modifier tab. So we're going to add a modifier to the link. The first one we're going to add is array. So we're going to put an array onto that. Now this is the part where things tend to get a little bit sketchy. Um, and sometimes I have to experiment to get things to work right. So we'll add in the second modifier, that's the curve modifier. And we'll send it to the curve and we'll see what happens here. Now, it's kind of gone off in its own direction and it's sitting upside down on the curve. That's what it looks like to me. So, we'll just look at that later. First thing we want to see, and we can use the wheel to do this. Let's change our increment here to give a space in between these. So we'll give 0.2 for a space, and then we'll be dialing back and looking for that one point. So one space is a little bit closer than the others. Um, I can deal with that. Now, what we might need to do here to our link is take and rotate it 180 degrees. So if we look at it from a side view and we rotate 180, it should flip it. So now it will be sitting on the outside of the curve. Um, that looks pretty much perfect. Like this has worked out very well. And sometimes that isn't what happens. You'll run into events like your curve is turned inside out. And yeah, those are a little more difficult to troubleshoot. And hopefully if recalculating the outside worked, the normals wouldn't be flipped when the curve gets converted from a mesh into a curve. And then something like... Um, a complete inverse of following what you see as the curve 
um, would not happen. But um, I could show that, I suppose. If we take the curve and we go into edit mode, um, a curve has, let's see, I think it's in control points, a tilt. So if the normals were inverted, the tilt would be inverted. So if we change the tilt, now let's do it textually, 180. Um, well, it didn't actually happen this time. And I don't really want to leave that that way. So we're going to... Uh-oh. I think that... Yeah, it didn't happen that time. That makes it difficult to show the problem that you could run into. Um... So yeah, I'm not going to be able to show how to get out of problems that don't happen. And I don't want to make videos that are centered around finding the problems. Generally, following this procedure has worked most times for me. On occasion, it doesn't work and I have to repeat the procedure. So that's something to know. So... The tank that we've created is different than the previous tank. And its major difference is that our axles are essentially solid axles between each side of the tank. The wheels animations are connected to each other and the wheels on the tank are like this. So let's get all of our tank wheels into the picture now so we can see what's going on. Let's get all of the pieces. And we'll look at how to create the illusion. And hopefully this video isn't going to take too long. So that looks pretty good. Um, now, this is a com common type of thing for, uh, for Blender tutorials. This type of tank track is pretty common and it does not work in Godot. It's not going to work that way but so we're not going to parent it to the body and make it so that the track does looks like it's sticking to the ground or anything like that because that doesn't that won't translate into Godot what we're going to do is we're going to take our link we're going to rename it tread.001 so we have our tread we're going to Shift, duplicate it, drop it, shift, duplicate it, drop it. And we can try with three or four copies. Um, my previous attempt took three copies. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to shift A, add an empty, and we'll just put in an arrow. So we can grab that arrow and point it at the bottom of our treads. Um, yeah, there's no precision here. This is just a measuring tool. So this is a tool to measure, to eyeball out our animation. So we have three treads. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate the three treads. So we have tread number one, and we'll, it can just stay exactly where it is. So we're in object mode. We have tread number one selected. We're going to apply its modifiers. So now that these modifiers are applied, <clears throat> it's just a solid mesh. It's not moving around a curve or anything. So we'll take the second tread and let's look at the direction our tank is traveling. We want to move this tread a section along. So we're more or less looking at one third of the travel distance. 
we'll apply the modifiers. We'll get the third tread. And we're going to move it to about here. And I'm just eyeballing this out. This is very guessworky. So I'll apply the modifier and I'll apply the modifier. Now we have tread one, two, and three. The curve is irrelevant. It has no more relevance. So we'll take this. <clears throat> we'll export it. We'll use the GLTF format again. This time we're going to include selected objects only. And there is no animation to include. So we'll navigate to our folder. I've put that directly in here. I'll overwrite my existing file. That may cause Godot to protest. And we'll have a look at that. So we'll open that up. And what do we have? We have three treads. Let's turn off the visibility of all three treads and add in an animation player. So we're going to add in an animation player. We'll create a new animation. We'll call it Tread. OK. We'll leave Snap enabled and we're going to change our Snap to, let's say, around 0.05. This is what I did with the last one and my timing is not perfect. The timing on this needs to be worked out and that's going to take a little bit of playing around. So we'll bring the animation player playhead back and we'll start entering in visibility keyframes. So we'll put in a visibility keyframe for all of the things with them all turned off. So we have three treads with the visibility all turned off. Now we'll come ahead to the next point. We'll select all of these keyframes and we'll go duplicate keyframes. We'll come ahead, duplicate keyframes. Now in the first frame, visibility is turned off. <clears throat> We're going to turn it on, key that in. In the second frame, we're going to turn on tread 2, key that in. In the third frame, we're going to key in the visibility on tread 3. <clears throat> now, let's try 0.15 for our time. And we'll play, and we'll see what we get out of that. So what we get is an optical illusion of what appears to be treads turning, when really it's just um, three images simulating this appearance. <clears throat> so this is essentially how I made my two-dimensional um, top-down or isometric tank treads. So this is ready to be saved. We can stop this scene, save scene as. I'll overwrite this scene, okay. We'll instance this scene on to this, but we don't need the link anymore, so we can just delete that node, okay. We'll take our tread. We'll drop it in here. We're going to make editable children so that we're able to turn on the animation player. We'll turn on this animation. And we'll turn on this drive animation. And we'll see how that works together. So that's how that animation, that illusion is created. And it's my belief that for people that are looking to rig a, a tank tread so that 
it can deform with the wheels that this is exactly how you would go about that and that's a that's a fairly decent illusion that's created by this that's completely passable and well hopefully people find it useful so that's it for this video in the next video um i'm going to look at what to do with this little tiny toy tank and we'll have a look at that and its scale in comparison to the previous tank in upcoming videos so until then take care